I'll let you guys listen to this. Swapping tales and making grand plans for the future, completely unaware of the part they are to play in the events that are about to unfold. Cool. Let's we'll get this started. Done. Greetings, Rothgar. My name is Goldrin Axebearer. Farewell, lad. Cool. Well, then you just uh, sort some things out in your options menu. So here is our, our you know, thing to worry about. So here's a difficulty slider. Over here means we're going to die. So to describe this, I'll put it over here. Uh, the far left is what's called story mode. Uh, when it is slow, you're invulnerable, your attacks pretty much always hit, and you get way more experience. If I go over here, this is easy. Easy is you deal, you get max hit point, uh, I don't know even why it says all rules are maximum. Uh, this is true all up to core rules. However, your characters cannot permanently die, and all spells are learned automatically. You monsters deal 25% less damage, and you receive 50% more experience and easy. Uh, core, which is what we're going to be playing on, is no modifiers at all. And on hard and insane, you receive more experience, but monsters do 50 or 100% more damage. Uh, however, as you can see, you can turn off the difficulty based damage increase, because on hard and insane, there does spawn more monsters. And you can also turn off these no difficulty based XP bonuses. There's Heart of Fury mode, which is super hard mode. Uh, you can also use 3 E sneak attacks and crippling strikes. Uh, we're going to keep this option of max HP and level up because, to be honest, in this kind of game, you're going to need every hit point you need. And if I get screwed on these rolls, I will not be able to beat the game at all. Perhaps another day I'll take on the challenge of not max HP rolls. And see how long it'll last. Uh, probably not very, though. So let's look at our characters again. Uh, first things first. We're going to want to mess with their scripts. Now, don't worry. If you're play you want to play Esmond Dale, there is one script you can pick for all your characters that just, in general, good. Uh, as you can see, they all explain what they do, but the Icewind Dale pregen script is really good. Your thieves search for traps, your fighters auto attack, if you turn on Bard Song, they will stop attacking, stuff like that. You should give all your characters this script. Because if you don't, they will just decide they don't want to fight monsters anymore, and they'll just you have to target everything individually. It's just, uh, for early game, it's just a convenience thing. So let's just do that for all these characters really quick. Uh, 
Whoops. And yeah. I kind of like how uh, Baldur's Gate has like a little like tick block system you can use to change the script. Though I hate that there are some things that are on by default. Like casting spells automatically. I don't want you to cast spells automatically. That's annoying. Especially when it's my protagonist casting spells. So this game does not have a protagonist to worry about, at least. Also, who has 18? You do. Monk, lead the way for the moment. I will not have the monk leading the way for the most part of the game. And yeah, let's figure out equipment. What is this? More barbarians come to my shop? No doubt with nothing to barter with but, but, but more wolf pelt and polished stones. <sighs> Very well, let us get this over with. What do you want? Alright, I'd like to see what you have for sale. And I'd like to see some coin before I go to the trouble of showing you my wares. I have no patience for those who are just browsing. There's no need to be rude, I assure you. I intend to buy. Now may I see your wares? How dare you speak in this manner? Do you know who I am? I really don't care who you are. I just want to buy something. <laughs> I am Poem Agus <laughs> Royal Tomac Envoy of Callum Shan, an appointed overseer of the Northern Caravan Routes. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, your appearance as a lowly shopkeeper is a clever disguise to throw off would-be assassins, uh, am I right? Your poor attendant sarcasm is obvious sign of your lowly birth. I'll have you know that I am a third cousin to the Pasha himself, not to mention a royal courtier in good standing. Whatever. Can I just buy something, please? Thank God. I think it's funny that monks can't use quarterstaffs. So you start off with a paltry amount of gold. Uh, first things first, sell your quarterstaffs. They're all worth one gold. You're not going to be using these unless you gave one of your characters a quarterstaff frenzy, which is a valid choice, by the way. So first things first, let's go through this list, and we're going to want to buy the cheapest possible things we can that for our party's equipment. So, you know, just to make sure we don't make a mistake and suddenly not have enough money for stuff. Uh, I picked Axe on this guy, which is an interesting choice, because that means I can use a two-handed axe, it uses the same proficiency, but I will not. I will be using a one-handed axe. Uh, right here, Battle Axe. I'm also going to buy this guy's shield right now, too. I gave this guy a sling proficiency, so let's buy that. Uh, so ammo. You want to buy a lot of ammo, you're going to go through a lot of it. I recommend for your range guys just putting in 12 and you'll have a fuck ton of ammo that'll last you for a while. Uh, this guy I gave a longbow. He can't use composite, but he can use longbow, so. Boop, and you get a short bow. And same with their arrows. You want to make sure they have a lot of arrows. Because you run out, it sucks, and arrows are cheap. Cool. Monks don't wear armor, so let's also buy a shield for you. I uh, have a tower shield. Buy two suits of splint mail. Uh, wizards don't wear armor. Bards wear chain mail. Uh, you can make your thief wear hide armor, but as you can see, hide armor gives you negatives to all your thief skills, more or less. So don't do it. It's there for druids, more or less. Uh, for your fighters, you don't need helmets. Helmets prevent crits from doing critical damage, so your fighters can wear helmets to prevent that. Monks can't wear helmets, wizards can't, these guys can't, and these guys can't. So, let's equip our squad, our team. As you can see, the monk only has 4 AC, which is bad. Uh, to give you an idea of what this AC actually means, is to figure out what the modern day D&D &D AC would be for these characters, would be to... Uh, I think it's... Okay. I gotta think for a second. Yeah, you take... Okay, sorry. It takes a second. So, the way to translate your AC if you're familiar with D normal D&D &D is 
you take 20 and track by the 4 here is what the AC actually is. So this character has AC 16 in this case. Uh, Thacko works a similar way. You can see his modification of minus 1. That just means it a plus 1 to hit. So as you can see, with my split mail, I have a AC of 0, which would be an AC of 20. And with the shield, I have an AC of 21. Now, as a note, this dwarf does not have 18 dexterity, so his AC will be 20 or 0 in this case. Uh, your AC is important early game, but later game it won't be as important, to be honest. Obviously, lower is always better, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers, and you're better off killing your threats before they can even hit you, usually, or finding ways to avoid damage entirely. I did not buy a weapon, a melee weapon for this character yet, because I don't need one yet, to be honest. Cool. So everyone is equipped with their appointed gear. Excellent. Perfect. So I'm not going to talk to Rothgar yet. Uh, I'm just going to go and begin the quest. Uh, I'll talk to him later, though. Help! Monsters! Quick, we've got to get the Hrothgar! There are monsters in town, they almost ate me! Whoa! Oh, sorry. Mm. Whoa, lad, slow down there! What are you talking about? Monsters! A whole bunch of them, they came down to the shore while I was fishing. I heard everything in a red when I saw them. But they didn't chase me, I thought we were, they were going to eat me. But I guess they were just after my fish! Where are these monsters now, lad? Just over the bridge, down by the lake. My dad told me not to go fish so far by myself, but I can't help it. That's where I catch the big ones. He's gonna kill me when he finds out I lost today's catch. All because of those stupid monsters. <laughs> Don't you worry, lad. We'll deal with these thieving monsters and get your fish back. Cool. So before we go any farther, let's make a base save. Uh, spoiler, there's definitely no dungeon called the Dragon's Eye. Don't worry about that. Uh, beginning of recording adventure. Normally, I'm just going to quick save, by the way. Uh, because it's more it's quicker. But I like to save at key points. Like the game of adventure. Now, this encounter has the highest variance of going in any direction at all, by the way. But here's what we're going to do. So... I guess this will double as a tutorial, like, how to play this kind of game. So space is the hockey to pause, and we're going to fight these goblins. Now, there's a lot of goblins, we're level 1, any hit could kill any of my characters at this point. So it's better to be, to use all your resources as you can, and to rest often. So normally, I, since I quick say, if I were to die here, I'd normally just quick load. And I'm probably not going to die because goblins aren't scary. So let's engage, and talk to everyone, I want them to attack this goblin. Except for you, I want to move over there. And you, I want to go over there, and let's see what happens. Okay. So I'm going to cast the sleep spell. If you click this little, like, moon and three star symbol, you open your list of spells. They're in this line. This is sleep, so I want to cast sleep. I point there, he'll cast it at that point. Now, as you can see here, this is a little, like, a uh, little, like, chat box here. It tells you what's going on, and I have a choice of the dice rolls as well. So I know Gideon will hit the guy he's shooting at. It also tells me who was attacking who. So all these goblins are attacking all my tank characters, which is good, so I don't need to worry about that. And those goblins are sleeped. And this should get fine now. And the reason that my monk go up first is so they would not be engaged with these goblins. I don't want my monk to be tanking it at all. Cool. You can't save during combat, by the way. So these targets are asleep and effectively not a threat to me. So I will ignore them for now, because they are not a threat to me. You always want to figure out who are your threats and kill your threats first before you deal with your other not so much threats. So in this case, these, these sleeping goblins aren't a threat. 
And now that I'm here, since they're unconscious, the first of them will be a free hit. This goblin woke up before I get to him in time, but that's fine, he's dead. Easy. Uh, sometimes these goblins can uh, snipe your clothy wearing characters and low AC characters and kill them. That's the only real threat to this encounter. Uh, you generally don't want to loot weapons and stuff because they aren't worth very much, but bows are worth a decent amount, as you saw from how much the one I bought from Proam was, so it's a good idea to buy some bows. Don't worry about picking up axes, and the rest of these goblins have no loot that I care about. So let's proceed forward. Quick save before you do anything in this game, or you're going to regret it. So again, these are wolves. Wolves are low threat, so I'm not going to worry about casting spells on these wolves. Like, I killed them before, you know, my warrior even got to one. Uh, range characters, as you can tell from this, tell what they're doing to these wolves, are very good early on. But they will get worse and worse very quickly. But right now, they are super useful. Okay. So as you can see, this is like the caravan that was, that's totally missing. So, quick save, let's go. Again, we're going to be microing the crap out of the monk a lot. And we want to watch who these guys face because they will change your targets mid combat. Uh, sometimes the character gets stuck on stuff and you might need to micro them around a bit. As you saw my monk there getting stuck on his friend. It usually doesn't matter, and a good way to avoid it is making one of your characters use a two-hand weapon. Because then they can swing guys over someone's shoulder. Though no one in my party, though, can actually use a two-hander. And that's probably not going to change, to be honest. Okay. As you can see, I mean, by my monk just running around in circles a lot. I don't want my monk to die. Okay, now I already know what's ahead in that room. There's a lot of orcs. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, you know, if I was playing a more conservative player, I would have given my thief some hide and shadows or, a, you know, save scout long enough to get that. Oh, look, a free short sword. Here, have a free short sword. Oh, no, your long sword, that's right. Never mind. So here is how I'm going to handle this fight. First things first. I'm going to want my sleep spell, but I already used it for the day, and I can't use it again. I could gamble on this, but there's no point in doing that. Let's quick save. I will save some through rest, because I don't want to deal with it. So you got a monster. If you hit L, you can quick load back. I don't feel like fighting uh, ambushes. It's just a waste of time. In my opinion. So I will happily save scum there. So let's deposit everyone else over here. I don't want them doing anything yet. And here's the plan. I'm going to get this guy out here and draw all the aggro. And I'm going to give him his... Yeah, just get over to this wizard and everyone else, let's go in. Whoops, whoops press the button there. So... I ain't hanging on all these guys, but these two guys are annoying and they're using bows. So are these guys. So I'm going to just make a... Decision here, I'm going to sleep these guys down here. As you can see, my dwarf is getting shot at, but he's not taking much damage due to his defensive stance. Let's use my Reckless Dwemer, and let's sleep, let's try and sleep these guys up here as well. Strengthened. Is my dude, like, super buff now? No. <laughs> I'm worried. I'm not quite sure what that does. So let's command this guy. I'm, I'm worried. I'm not quite sure what that did. Did it give him any buffs or just... No, okay. Yeah, he's already back up again. I kind of just want to kill him. I'm worried. Okay, he's slow, so let's have him just fight the wizard. And you're awkward, so fight this guy. 
So I'm, my monk's getting punched, by the way, but I got lucky and she didn't get hit. Okay, let's finish off the shaman. And let's kill these archers. And sweet. Easy first encounter. Now you might ask yourself, what would you do to actually prepare yourself to fight that kind of encounter? And the answer to that question is hide in shadows for your thief. Uh, I didn't put any points in it, so I won't be using it very much, but I'll try and use it later on. Though, more likely than not, I'm just going to use the invisibility spell. Which is a second level spell, and I'll use that to scout things out later on. But for now, I won't be needing it. But, perfect. As you can see, we killed all these guys. Uh, make sure when you're fighting any enemies, specifically in Icewind Dale, to make sure you loot them. Because, uh... These few gold coins here and there you pick up are worth the trouble. They really do add up really quick. And these guys do have chance... Now, I'm not quite sure about these orcs in particular, but enemies in this game have a random chance to just drop a magical item. Or a potion, or a scroll. You know, they have a chance to drop weird stuff. I don't think these orcs do in particular, but I know most enemies have a chance to drop cool stuff. Another note is a lot of the magic items in this game are also uh, randomly generated. But they're skewed, so they're items that are useful for your party. So you're probably not going to get any, like, druid-only stuff if you're playing a, uh, a party of no druids, but unless you, like, you're supposed to get that item there, like, it's the item you're destined to get. There are some items that you are just, like, you know, guaranteed to get. And yeah, is interesting facts by Icewind Dale, I suppose. In fact, I'm curious what item we're gonna get here because there is a magical item in this cave. I recommend also just exploring everything in this game. Don't leave any stones unturned. But yeah, these first few fights are obviously very easy. We're not going to die on them. And let's see from this chest. So we got a magical ring. Now, we don't know what it does. Uh, so let me explain a mechanic in the game called lore. Now, my bard's lore skill is probably too low to identify this. Oh, I'm wrong. He eats high enough. So let me ex explain how this works. So every character has a stat called lore. Which is used to determine whether or not they can, for free, identify magical items. Our bard here has a lore stat of 20, because he's a bard. Our rogue has a 0, our wizard has a 16, our monk has a 0, our priest has a 1, due to their high wisdom, and our dwarf has a 0. Our wizard has a 16, because they're a wizard, and they also have high wisdom. And the reason Gideon here has 20 is because he's a fucking bard. And bards have a much higher chance of identifying magical items. This one isn't that useful, but isn't useless. It's a plus 2 on saving throws versus spell. Let's talk about saving throws, because we have something that matters. You have a lot of them. Paralysis, Poison, Death, Rod, Staff, Wand, Polymorph, Magification, Breath, Weapon, and Spell. These are all determined by class... And the only time your stat matters is if you're a shorty, quote-unquote. What's a shorty? That's a dwarf halfling or no. So let's look at our dwarf. You know, you might notice my poison save is really good. It's a 9. Does anyone else have a 9? The cleric has a 10. Uh, our monk has a 10 as well. And, you know, 14 and 13. You know, these saves are like, you know, whatever. But I have like a 9. It's pretty good. That's because I have really high con, and dwarves get better poison saves due to their high con. Uh, of the other races, you get different better saves on different things. I'm a fire, though, so my poison wave is already pretty good. But, uh, 
the best way to look at this is the people who I care about getting cast by spells are giving me my frontline fighters. And the worst person with a spell save is my uh, cleric. So I will give the ring... Actually, maybe dwarves do spell. I'm not, I can't remember. I can't remember which they all do. So let's give this ring to my cleric. So now their saving throw versus spell is 13 minus 2. So it's actually 15, but you know, 13 now because it's minus 2. So, uh, a thing you should do often in this game, and I'm going to reiterate this, is rest often. It's quicker to heal by resting. I'm not going to worry about that. You just want to rest, you get all your spells back, get all your health back, it's useful. You want to do it often, because if you play like me, and you just want to go and do stuff, you don't have to waste your time casting individual heal spells on yourself, and you can make sure that when you go into harder encounters, you always have all your spells, because you'll need them to win. Or you will probably die a lot. Especially in Icewind Dale. Also, quick save often, because sometimes shit happens, you just die. So, as a note... Ah, dwarf, what are you doing? Oh, my monk's been hit. I want to run away immediately. Because if anyone is susceptible to dying right now, it's them and these guys. Cool. I just don't want the monk to die because they'll be annoying. I don't want them to lose any experience in particular. Because it's very imperative I get them to a high level as soon as possible. Because until then, I'm going to be microing the fucking crap out of this monk. And I need to make sure they don't lose any levels. I only lost 3 HP. So it's unlikely I'll be one shot killed by most things, though. Uh, if you didn't know it was around this corner, I would be knowing that I'm lying to myself and 